What's up, everybody? This is the Welcome to the Show podcast. I'm Manny Gomez. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MannyGo3. LA, what's good? What's up, Manny? <laughs> what's good? I'm alive and well, man. I'm alive and well. We have a jam-packed show, CT. We're going to talk about... Let's do it. We're going to talk about the Manny Machado signing. Finally, a big, a big free agent player gets signed. Then we're going to talk about Bryce Harper and Craig Kimbrell. Why are they still on the market? I don't understand. And then if we have some time, we're going to talk about some comments that uh, Max Scherzer made and some signings that the Yankees have made as well. But let's start off with the Manny Machado signing CT real quick. It took over 110 days for this to happen. The San Diego Padres finally bite and they give the guy 10 years, $300 million dollars. The biggest contract in American sports history. CT, question for you. Do you think that he was overpaid by the Padres? No, I don't think he was overpaid. I think he he's getting the money that a player of his caliber should get. I think the only thing that is shocking is that he got 10 years out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, we thought that 10-year deals were done, but he managed to sway them in that direction and now he's he's probably going to be the second 10-year player of the of the offseason. Bryce Harper's probably the the next one. So, yeah, I yeah, that surprised me too. I thought that that teams were done giving away those kinds of deals. I wasn't going to be surprised if he had gotten 35, even 40 million dollars. I know that that sounds excessive, but I didn't think that he was going to get that type of money over 10 years. It just seemed to me like yeah. With that, with analytics and all this stuff, that teams just don't want to give out that kind of that kind of money anymore. But yeah, I'm mad enough to say CT that I was wrong. Now, are you mad enough to say that you were wrong that he wasn't going to play shortstop? <laughs> yeah, I'm not only mad enough to say that to to admit that he's not playing shortstop, even though I think he will end up playing shortstop during his career a lot longer than you think. But okay. I also I'm also mad enough to to admit that I was wrong about him going to the Yankees. I I really thought he was going to the Yankees since, since before the season ended. Uh, I thought it was a no brainer, but that's why I'm not, you know, the GM of, of any, uh, any MLB team. (laughs) I think that if Miguel and Duhar hadn't broken out a year early, he probably would be a Yankee today because the Yankees wouldn't have known what they had in Miguel and Duhar. But, uh, you know, we got lucky, I guess. And and in a way, yeah. I'm 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 kind of happy. Like I know that that Manny Machado improves any team that he goes on, but I don't think that the Yankees needed him at the moment. I think that they scored enough runs to you know fall behind the Red Sox last year. I think this year we made the improvements that we needed to make to get better to maybe get over the hump. We didn't need another bat. You know what I'm saying? I know that that sounds weird, but I'd rather them focus their attention on. A pitcher, another pitcher at that. So I think that, uh, you know, for him, good for him. He got the money that he wanted. He's going to a beautiful state in California, to a beautiful town in in, uh, San Diego. So good for him. But good luck winning a championship in the next few years, Manny Machado. (laughs) But all right, real quick, with, with that whole thing about him not winning a championship and all this, like, I mean, they're they're in the they're in the division with the Dodgers, right? Mm-hmm. That's basically. I mean, the Giants don't look like they're going anywhere. Arizona looks like they're not going to bounce back. The Rockies are random. They're they're good one year and then they don't make the playoffs the next year. The Padres have money to spend and they have a bunch of prospects. Like what what why? I just feel like if let's say roles were reversed and the Yankees had a great farm system before we knew what judge was going to be. And before we knew all these things with what the team is looking like the last two years, they had a good farm system. They had money to spend, had Manny Machado landed on a team like that. I think we'd all be looking at a bright future, but with the Padres, we're all kind of quick to tell them that he's screwed for the next 10 years, Yeah, but they're set up pretty good. I mean, they, they can pretty much make any move they want. They have the money to spend and they have the prospects to make trades. So why are we, why is everybody just, you know, is it because they won less than 70 games last year? I mean, can a team really do that back to back years? 
after before the moves that they're going to make? You know, like, can a team really be that bad back to back years? I don't think that the Padres are going to be worse than last year because of the moves that they're making and because they have such good prospects. Um, but can a lose a team lose more than seventy games two years in a row? Yeah, look at the Astros a few years back. You know what I mean? And I think that's what that's what kind of scares me about the the San Diego Padres is that they're setting themselves up so that they can be competitive for the next God knows how many years. Like the Astros, you know what I mean? The Astros, yeah. the Astros had probably the three worst back to back seasons that any team has ever had before they turned into this powerhouse that they are now now you know they lose charlie morton they're losing dallas keichel and you're still saying to yourself they're probably the you know one two three best teams in uh in baseball so i think that's going to be what we're going to be saying about the san diego padres in the next few years and if i'm wrong then whatever all, all i'm saying for me you know with manny machado is that we're not gonna he's stuffed away in san diego now like he's not gonna be on you know on primetime TV, people are barely going to see him, barely going to talk about him. But I guess at the end of the day, he got his money, so good for him. And I well, I hope that the Padres are competitive because I got to say, a guy like Manny Machado, who played a villain last year, you need a guy like that on 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 the on the field on TV. He makes the game more entertaining. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, you think that if the Padres don't start winning games people are still not gonna tune in like you think if the padres start winning and competing people aren't gonna tune in i I think they are i mean it's it's the west coast you know it's like i feel like they got their own version of of their own tv time of watching we probably won't tune in we're on the east coast Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna i barely watch the dodgers games Mm -hmm. you know maybe like the first couple of innings but i think if i think if they start winning games people start watching that's just my opinion though yeah i guess so um that you know, and that leads us to something else. So good thing that Manny Machado signed because we got to see some action. Um, but you still have Bryce Harper out there, and uh, this weekend, a lot of a lot of news was coming out of Las Vegas. Apparently, John Middleton went to Las Vegas to try to negotiate negotiate a contract with Man, with uh, Bryce Harper. He said that he wasn't going to leave Las Vegas unless a, a contract was signed. Apparently, that didn't happen because he's back in Philly and there's no contract on the table. Now the Dodgers are back in the mix. And it sounds to me like Bryce Harper really does not want to go to Philadelphia. Um, And it looks like he might end up taking a short-term deal with the Dodgers. If you're Bryce Harper, do you suck it up and just go to Philly? Because you know they're going to give you the money. Or do you take a short-term deal in in L.A.? What do you think? What would you do? First, Philly is looking pretty good, Mm -hmm. like, for the future. And I still think they're getting Mike Trout. So they're looking even better than most teams are the next couple of years. Um, I'm going to Philly simply because it's the more guaranteed money. Like, I know he can just as easily sign a deal with the Phillies that has an opt-out clause after, like, five years just like Machado did. Yeah. And it's like kind of like the same thing, you know. Um, the only difference is if, if things don't pan out, he's, he still has those other five years that he can – He's going to get paid for it. If he signs a short-term deal with the Dodgers, I mean, he hasn't done enough like a guy like Clayton Kershaw. You know how Kershaw kind of opted out and added like another year to his contract, even though he's beyond 30. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't feel like he's done enough to have a short-term deal and then just kind of come out of that deal and re-up for another deal. You know, I think I would go with the guaranteed money if it was me. Yeah. You know, I don't know what it is that he has against Philly. I mean, he played in DC, which is not that far from Philly. It's a short drive away, an hour and a half, two hours, maybe. Um, maybe he just wants to be closer to home. You know what I mean? Las Vegas to, to, to from LA to Las Vegas, I think it's, you know, you can drive there. You can drive back and forth. Um, and the Dodgers are a prestigious organization who is always going to be in the mix somehow. You know what I mean? Whereas the Phillies tend to have ups and downs. They had a nice up period when, when, they won in 2008, and then they lost in 2009, and then they've kind of slacked the whole time since then. But you can't sleep on Philly. That's still a big market, and it looks like John Middleton wants to spend money, and they're set up for the future. They have Reese Hoskins. They have you know they have a good team. They have a good squad. Aaron Nola, right? Like they're in good shape. So I'm with you. If I'm Bryce Harper, I take the guaranteed money 
Maybe you negotiate a, a player option after a third year or something like that. I would even negotiate a player option after year one. Right? Why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, give me player options every single season. And then he can gauge the market. If he doesn't want to do this again next year, you accept the option. You move on to year two. And you do it all over again. But um, to just, I don't know. It just seems to me like maybe there's a mystery team that we don't know about. Because John Middleton promised he was going to spend stupid money entering this offseason. He goes to Vegas to meet with Machado, with uh, Bryce Harper. He says he's not going to leave unless he has a deal. And it doesn't pan out. So to me, that either means he really doesn't want to go to Philly. Um, or his asking price is just too crazy, or there's a mystery team involved. And I wonder who that mystery team is. Um, I don't know. The Giants apparently were were in the mix at one point. Who else is out there that could use Manny that could use Bryce Harper's, you know, services? I don't know, but what are the Giants doing? Like, didn't they just get Evan Longoria last year? Yeah, but they, that was that was a that was a random signing. It was their payroll went down though. They have money to spend. They're they're at one sixty seven, so they have before they meet the luxury tax threshold, they have forty million forty mil to go. Um, so they can afford him for sure. I just don't know what they're gonna do moving forward. You know what I mean? Like after you get Bryce Harper, yeah. then what? Like are, are you still rebuilding? How do you rebuild? I don't. You know, I'm not sure how that works. Um, I don't know. It 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 would be cool to see Bryce Harper for playing for the Dodgers because it's like a it's like a match made in heaven like you got the baseball's biggest star versus to one of the biggest franchises mm-hmm. but I would like to see him go to Philly yeah. personally I feel like he he looks he'd be like a good fit for Philly the Dodgers just seems to be a lot of like drama stories it kind of be like the end of Machado's time at, at the Dodgers stadium yeah. where he wouldn't hustle and this and that I feel like we'd, we'd see more of that than anything else uh also I mean, if we're to believe that players shy away from the spotlight, not that he shies away from the spotlight, but I feel like it'd be harder to play for the Dodgers than it was for playing for the Nationals. And he didn't do the best playing for the Nationals, you know? So I, I would rather see him go to Philly, where I feel like the pressure's a little bit more off, even though those fans are psychos and they <laughs> tear him apart if he sucks. But. <clears throat> So the next thing is Craig Kimbrell. Now he's saying, and I wrote a piece about this on Call to the Pen, that he might sit out 2019 if he doesn't get the contract that he wants. And the contract that he wants, um, according to him, in the winter meetings, he said he wanted six years and $100 million, which would make it the, the richest contract the relief pitcher has ever made, but it wouldn't be the biggest contract on an annual you know, average or whatever. Um I pers- personally, you guys know how I feel about Craig Kimbrell. I think he's one of the best relievers of all time. He's coming off of probably one of his worst seasons. He was extremely shaky in the postseason. Um, he's 30, 30, 31 years old. You can't give a guy coming off of one of his worst seasons um, and who's 31 years old a six-year deal. You just can't do that, especially if, especially considering that his velocity went down last year. Um, I think that he should be the highest paid reliever annually for sure you should give him 18 19 million dollars a year but you can't give him six years not a guy like Kimbrel. not yet not anymore at least hey man i'm giving him the i'm giving him the years and i'm giving him the money i would just structure it like i said maybe opt out after three years four years he probably won't so you're stuck with that but i mean i don't i just don't get like i i, I just feel like teams are just they're aiming younger and they're taking their chances on these guys that really haven't proven themselves in the MLB. But then like, what does that do for the guys that, that, that have done it for like a decade? You know, what, what's the point? Mm -hmm. What, where, what, what, what could he have done? I mean, I know he's asking for a lot of money, but doesn't he deserve tax for a lot of money when Wade Davis got a big deal or all this Chapman got a big deal. I'm not going to say Kenley Jensen because they're, they're even when it comes to, you know, how, how elite they've been. But Mark Melanson, like, do you remember Mark Melanson? Yeah. He's getting paid a good amount of money to to be ass, which is what he is. <laughs> like, he's, he's he's not even a thought anymore when it comes to to shutting a team down. Like, I, and and Mark Melanson, I mean, I don't have to look up his age. He looks kind of old though. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I I just figured like I feel like these players that 
have been good for so long. There, there should be like some clause in, in MLB's contracts where they just get paid what they deserve. I don't know. I don't think. I just don't think that's how it works. You know, a team isn't going to pay you. For, no, it's not how it works. Yeah, a team is you know? a team isn't going to pay you for what you've done in the past. They're going to do you. They're going to pay you for what you can. You know, what you can provide for them in the future. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you know, you'd have a whole bunch of overpaid players. Like, look at Albert Pujols. He got paid for for what he had accomplished to that point, and look at him now. It's an albatross contract. He's holding the the Angels back in a lot of ways because they have to pay him so much money. And um, what good does that do an organization? Look, but let me let me just let, let me just ask you this. Let let's say, we always bring up Aaron Judge in like every episode because mm-hmm. he's a good example. He's he's easily a forty home run a year average type of player. He's gonna draw a hundred walks. Strike out three hundred times, whatever. Uh, doesn't it suck that he can do that his whole career, but because history shows us that after the age of thirty-one he starts to decline, he'll never get that big contract. And I'm not saying that he should be greedy and get that money, but he's a professional, right? And you, basically, only players, by the way, only players that are fortunate enough to come up at the age of 19 like Vlad Jr. or Bryce Harper or Machado, only those players can ever get the real good contracts. Yeah. And how rare is it for a player? I mean, we have like Juan Soto and and uh and uh Ronald Ronald Acuña, right? But those guys are like generational players, you know. Even Trout, nobody knew what Trout was going to be. He's he's going to get money, yeah, but nobody knew what Trout was going to be. Yeah. So basically, you have to be you have to be an all-star player from the age of 20 and then hit free agency at the age of 26 or 27 to get the deal that a lot of guys who are better than those guys, even though they're a little bit older, deserve to get just as much as those guys are getting. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's the thing. I think that the problem is that baseball is the way baseball set up. And, and I think we've talked about this before. It's that you have to you have to sit through a minor league system for I don't know how many years before you get called up. And then the big league team could take advantage of you by holding you over for a few months and then and have control for another year. I think that for me, that's the that's the ultimate problem, because um, because then teams would be vying for a player's talents. Like if if Aaron Judge could be a free agent now, he'd be getting I think he'd be he'd be getting a t- he'd be getting big contract or big offers. Um but unfortunately, he had to sit through the minor leagues for three years. You know what I mean? He got called up in 2016 for a brief period. He didn't do so well. He got called up in 2017. He raked. And now he, and you know, last year he was great too. Now he has to give him, you know, three more years before he can try to get money or more than that, four, three or four years. So I think that the problem is, is the way that baseball is set up. For me, I think that if you get drafted by a team, maybe they should give you three years. That's it. After three years, you're a free yeah. agent. You know, if you can't make it to the big leagues in three years, then I'm sorry. The chances of you making it to the big leagues are probably not that good in the first place. You know what I mean? After three years, then you're a free agent. And if your minor league team wants to keep you, they can keep you. Or you can lend your services to another organization until you get called up. But they shouldn't have control over you for so many years. It's insane, man. It doesn't make any sense. I think that's the problem. Not... Yeah, it's crazy. Go ahead. I didn't say anything. Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh take take a guy like Clint Frazier, for example. Like he's he's in a bad spot right now. Yeah. When when do we know that he's gonna get his chance to get to the to the show, you know? Welcome to the show. But when do we know Clint <laughs> Frazier is gonna finally get his opportunity to show the he was, you know, his his uh his projections of, of what how good he's supposed to be, yet his situation, he's currently he's gonna currently probably have to set out another year this just all hurts his chances of cashing out mm-hmm. and it, it should is it, maybe it's not all about money but why can't these guys get paid i mean they dedicated their lives to be professionals man like can you really put a price on what a professional does <laughs> you know yeah i mean i just think it becomes difficult when we're talking about millions of dollars like even though even though aaron judge isn't going to get maybe a, a 300 million dollar deal like manny machado when he's 31 years old He's still going to get, you know, if he's still if he's producing at this rate, he's still going to get 20, 25 million dollars a year, which is an insane amount of money Um, that doesn't take away from the fact that the system is broken. I agree with you, but I think that the system has to be fixed. I think the the, the guys are currently playing right now are unfortunately they're just not going to they're not going to make that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? 
Look, uh, Aaron Judge could sign a a great deal when his time is up, but why? Like we shouldn't we shouldn't be like, oh, okay, well that 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 makes up for him not being able to sign more money because just pick anything in this world, pick Apple. Do we get iPhones for free now? Now that they've made their <laughs> billions of dollars off of, of off of all these people, no. Do we get iPhones for free? No. So Aaron Judge should get paid exactly what he's worth for what he's done is what he should get paid for. That's what I think. I don't. I just don't think it works like that, man. I'm sorry. Well, that's that's the way it should be. Is what I'm saying. I'm sorry, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. It's not like when I was a teacher. Like the more years you put in, the more you get paid. You know what I mean? I just don't think it's like that in baseball. And I think that if you gave, um any corporation a chance to let's say a corporation has analytics and it says that after the age of 50 your production declines right i bet you that if corporations were allowed to at the age of 50 they'd be paying you less than they were you know earlier but you know that's not the way the real world the real world works in baseball it's not the real world we're talking like i keep saying billionaires paying millionaires and we're talking about you know, guys who are on the decline at a very young age, and these teams don't want to get bogged down with these contracts and hurt their chances of winning games. So, you know, I could see your side, but I also understand why why it's happening. Yeah, you know, you're you're right, and it's it's hard to compare Major League Baseball players to a to a product like like the iPhone. <laughs> but but let's look at the stock market. All right, all right. It's going down, right? Mm-hmm. If Apple dropped a phone tomorrow, would it be the cheapest phone of all time? No. Would it be cheaper than their last phone? No, it'd be the most expensive phone. That's all I'm saying. Jesus. So I don't know, man. I'm going on I'm 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 going off off the off topic. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think it's 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 a little messed up because I know I know these guys end up being million multi millionaires anyways, but it, it, they they should get paid what the guy at the time is getting paid the most. Like it makes sense that Machado's making that much money when other guys of his level are making more money or just around the same money. If Judge yeah, hits I, free agency at a time where the best right fielder is getting paid this X amount of money, he should get paid that amount of money, and not just for the next three years. You know, I mean, that's up to him. But if he wants to play baseball till he's thirty six, as long as he can. He's healthy enough to produce. I mean, he he's earned the right to to sign that contract. So, if you're Aaron Judge and you're 37 years old and you've put together a Hall of Fame type career, you're saying that a team should pay him, you know, the highest contract, a hike of you know a big contract. If at 37 he's putting up Barry Bonds numbers. Wouldn't, you don't think Barry Bonds could have gotten a good three year deal at the end of his career? Yeah, but but that's what I'm. That's that's exactly what organizations are are thinking. They're thinking at this age he's not going to be putting up those kinds of numbers. So why am I going to pay him as if he is going to put up those kinds of numbers? Well, what if he came off a season like Barry Bonds came off of the year that he quit baseball or retired? Mm -hmm. Well, Barry Bonds was like the most hated man in baseball. I I'm with you, man. The, the man was inject injecting some shit on his in his ass and <laughs> cool, but I, I don't know, man. The next thing is Max Scherzer earlier, well, over the weekend said that instituting a pitch clock is messing with the fabric of the game. Do you agree with that? Do you do you feel like a pitch clock is somehow tarnishing baseball yeah that's i think that's what i meant to say last week when we talked about it that I'm, I'm not against it but he's right and i was looking at some i was looking at some uh stats earlier today that baseball games are only like on average four minutes longer than they've ever been mm -hmm. you know compared to other years and that's going back even further like i i just think that we just needed something to complain about and i think you know, conspiracy theory time. I think uh, MLB is just fabricating this whole baseball's getting boring thing so that they can afford to, so they they can get away with paying players less money. I th what do you think about that? I think that I, you you're great at conspiracy theories for sure. But I think that Thank in the, in this day and age, when when everything is an instant gratification and things are happening at a fast pace, a game like Major League Baseball, when you're seeing guys in the outfield, you know 
bored out of their minds. It just doesn't look so good. Um, so, yeah, you can watch an NFL game and it could be three hours. You can watch an NBA game and it might be two, two and a half hours. But there's always something happening. There's always action. And that's just not the case with baseball. And then when you see guys, my problem isn't so much with the pace of the game. I'm, I'm fine with a three-hour game. I could sit there for three. I could sit there for four hours and watch a game. I don't care. What bothers me is when you see guys stepping off the mound, rubbing the baseball, going to the rosin bag. The guy at the plate is stepping out of the box. He's adjusting his batting gloves. He's doing this. He's doing that. Just get to the game, man. Just get the game moving. And I feel like a, a pitch clock would institute a level of excitement, not so much like basketball, but a level of excitement to the game because you're watching this clock wind down. Is he going to deliver the pitch? Is he going to be able to step into the box in time? And it's also going to make these guys just speed the process up. You know what I mean? And maybe it'll only fasten the game up by five, ten minutes, which isn't that big of a deal. You know, but it'll feel like constant action as opposed to, you know, Mikhail Frankel taking 15 minutes to step into the batter's box, you know? Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm more on board with having a clock on when a pitcher should put his foot in the rubber, like have his foot mm-hmm. on the rubber, and he's at least peeking into the home plate. But to put a time limit on like when the ball should be pitched, man, I don't know about that. I, I think I agree with Scherzer that that's that's messing with the fabric of the game. And but Scherzer Scherzer is also the the kind of guy who's ready to fire that ball immediately. So. Yeah, but he also understands that. You know, he's he's that's just his way of pitching that not everyone thrives on pitching like that, like him and Chris Hale do. Yeah. So. Well, agree to disagree. <laughs> so you so you, so you do want the pitch clock. I do. I'll, t- I'll take the pitch clock. I'll do any anything that can change the game. Like 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 I said last week, the three pointer was instituted in 1979. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird's rookie season. And at the time, people thought it that there was you know what is this a three-point shot what's going to be next you know what i mean and the fact of the matter is is that it made the game more exciting you watch the all-star weekend now and the dunk contest is no longer the most exciting part of the the event it's it's the the skills competition and the three-point contest it's you know it just if it improves try it out and if it improves the game then keep it going if not you could always remove it later on you know what i mean with football we thought that when they moved the uh the kickoff didn't they move it they they moved the teams the point after they the the fact of the matter is nfl changes the rules every year and every year the game is just as entertaining yeah we don't see it as many brutal hits as we did before but the game is still entertaining so you know just let it be but you know what though like w- with every rule that with every rule that has been implemented, there's a there's a consequence. There's a consequence. There's like a direct impact if things go wrong. But with the MOB pitch clock, what's what's the big deal if they go a second over? Like, do they get penalized with a ball? Because I think that's that's messed up. I think that's going too far. Well, you should have been ready ahead of time. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, is that is that is that what is the pitch clock there as like a kind of like, hey, hurry up, or is it there like, yo, if you don't get this ball out? You're gonna be tacked on. With well, one yeah. Ball. I hopefully it's there to penalize somebody if they don't follow the rules. It's like the rule with with stepping out of the batter's box is not instituted. What's the point of having a rule if you're not gonna institute the rule? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. When they added that batter's box rule, nobody followed it. Yeah, Nothing really happened. But that's bullshit. So was, then why have the rule? They should follow that rule. Exactly. So maybe if they maybe if they kind of put some like pe- like some penalty around it. Yeah. I I can give you a better answer of what I think it's gonna be what I what I think of it, but for right now it just seems pointless and kind of, you know. <laughs> so yeah, as I mentioned last week, they're gonna try it out in spring training. The first couple of weeks, they're just gonna kind of let it slide, let the pitch clock roll or whatever. The second week, they'll start instituting rules, and the third and you know get feedback, and then the final week they'll, you know, re- you know use it as intended. I guess, and if if it doesn't work out, the players will have a chance to to you know talk about it with with uh, ownership and the umpires and so on and so forth. If it doesn't work out, then you don't use it. But you know, I think that something does have to be done. Maybe maybe you find a way to enforce that batter's box rule. But there's also pitchers that take their sweet time, and it's you know it, it really does slow it slows the game down. You know, people watch and they're saying, "What the hell's going on?" These guys are just standing around doing nothing, and it's just you know. 
anything to improve the game, I'm for it, man. I'm 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 down to try whatever, man. Try anything once is what I say, CT. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk some Yankees real quick, CT, because the Yankees are extending their young players. So last week they signed Luis Severino to a four year deal at ten million dollars a year in order to avoid arbitration. And now today was announced that they gave Aaron Hicks a seven-year, $70 million contract. I got to tell you that I love the moves because, one, Luis Severino, you know, he's locked up for us for the next four years. We don't have to worry about arbitration. He could just focus on his pitching, which it seems like he's really focusing on the things that, that he struggled with last year. With Aaron Hicks, he showed that when he's healthy, he's one of the best center fielders in the game. Uh, I wrote a piece on him earlier today on Call to the Pen. He has this the third uh, the third best F WAR behind Mike Trout and Lorenzo Cain. The second best runs created. He has a great on base percentage. He's swinging for pop now. He's a great defender, great arm. I think it's a good move. And now now you your situation in the outfield is kind of set. If Clint Frazier is a real deal. You know that Esteban Florial is going to be some sort of piece that you can trade midseason for a pitcher, perhaps. Um, I like the move, and I'm expecting now Dylan Batances to be next. And after that, I expect the Yankees to try to lock up Aaron Judge and Gary Sanchez moving forward. So I'm, I'm happy with it. I like it. I like that we're taking care of our, our homegrown players, CT. Yeah, I had no idea that Aaron Hicks finished 22nd in MVP voting. MVP he had a good year. season last year, man. No, he did, but of all the players in the MLB, he was the 22nd most valuable player. Let me guess, because his batting average was 240-something? That's, uh, that's why you no, don't like it? because rank rank all the best players on the Yankees. Is he, even, is he even top five? Last year, yeah, he was. Yeah? Yeah. No, 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 no. Not, not just – not. don't give me last year. Just name them, name them now. Like, name – Name the five best players on the Yankees. Key players, the ones that are valuable, the most valuable players on the Yankees. Name the top five most valuable players on the Yankees. All right, so Aaron Judge, uh, okay. Giancarlo Stanton, Luis Severino, okay. uh, I agree. James Paxton now. Okay. And I'm gonna go Gary Sanchez. So yeah, he's not in the type top can, five. <laughs> you can go. You can go Gary Sanchez. You can go Glaber Torres if you want. Like there's. I just don't see Aaron Hicks in anywhere. Yeah, those but guys but that's cor- he's only had one good season. Yeah, but we're, exactly. So last season he deserved to he deserved to be in that Hall of Fame, not Hall of Fame MVP voting. Maybe for his career, no. But last season he had a really good year. No, you're right. Maybe maybe not his career, but Didi Gregorius was twentieth in MVP votes last year. No, like, see that that does 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 MLB have a hard on for the Yankees or what? You're such a hater. It's unbelievable. No, I'm not. I'm not a hater, man. Look, put let me put this in perspective. Uh, let's see here. We got Aaron Hicks twenty second. He was more. He got he tied Chris Sale and Trevor Bauer, and Chris Sale and Trevor Bauer behind Didi Gregorius in MVP votes. Yeah, okay, I understand that, but they're starting pitchers, and there's only one other starting pitcher that appears in the top twenty two, and that's Justin Verlander. Actually, that's not true, and and Blake Snell too. So yeah, but wouldn't you even even if there's only one other starting pitcher, you don't think you don't think Chris Sale was more valuable to the Red Sox than Didi Gregorius last year? Yeah, Didi, no, who D- missed how many games did he miss? I agree. Didi Didi started off on fire last year, and then he cooled off, tr- you know, tremendously. So yeah, I agree with you. But my point is, Aaron Hicks had a good year last year. I mean, he he was better than Didi. He should have been ahead of Didi. He was better than Jed Lowry. That's good. Whit Merrifield, okay. he's better than Whit Merrifield. Why is he behind Mitt Merrifield? Mary, why is Blake Trine in 15th? Let's talk about that. Why is he 15th on this MVP voting? Why is Edwin Diaz 18th? You know, like because because just like just like you, Manny, you guys like to look more you guys like to look into things a little bit deeper than than the average fan. You you look at the Oakland A's and say, "Oh my god, look at this team. They won this many games." But no, they didn't do anything. They lost in the wild card game. That's what the Oakland A's. Are. That's how I look at them. That's how MLB look. That's how MLB MLB looks at the A's as a bigger story than they really are. I look at the Oakland A's as a team that couldn't even be, couldn't even make it past the wild card game. So is how I look at the Oakland A's. Right, whatever, man. 
Oh. By the way, I've been completely ignoring the comment section because my phone is blocking that part of it. Like the way that I have my phone hinged onto my laptop. You're, so. you're better off, man. We've been getting trolled by some account who I'm not going to give the, the, uh, oh. the, you know, the whatever you want to call. I'm not going to give him the credit that he wants. And then there's also a good friend of mine who keeps commenting things here. He wants to know if we talked about Bryce. Yes, we did. So there. Ha ha. Uh, uh, real quick, Blake Snell was also in the MVP yeah. votes. Yeah, so, no, uh, I I just think that Aaron Hicks showed last year that he's a legit center fielder, and he's 28 years old. That's the one thing that I'm puzzled by the the years, seven years. He's going to be 36 years old when this contract is up. Um, but he's an on base guy. He gets on base at a a really good clip. Over the last two seasons, he's averaging at about 370 or so. He's hitting for pop now. He could he could easily smack thirty home runs in Yankee stadiums, stadiums. But, you hear me? Wh- and he's wh- and he's one of the better center fielders in baseball. So, but he hit he hit twenty seven home runs, twenty home runs for the first time in his career. Mm-hmm. Now he can hit thirty home runs at Yankee Stadium. Where do you get that from? I'm sorry. Where where does that come from? Adjustments, man. Hitting coaches. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Steroids. <All> right, <laughs> Look, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. This is the first time I'm gonna say this year. You're gonna hear it a lot more throughout the year. But I just think people make exceptions for Yankees players. That's oh, what I think. Come on. I'm sorry because man. of one MVP voting. Did, did he have a good season last year or not? No, no, no. Let's ignore. It. Yeah, you know, he had a great season. So an MVP, Don't get me wrong. An, MVP great an MVP vote doesn't take into account prior years. It's just taking into account that one season. And he had a, a he's not, he was not an MVP worthy for sure. But he should have gotten no, some no. votes. I think. Okay, let's let's move past the MVP voting. Okay. Okay. Did you not just did Did you not just say that he can easily hit thirty home runs in a season? I think so. Yeah. All right, I'm just wondering where you got that number from just for the simple fact that he's never hit 30 home runs ever and not saying he won't do it this year, just wondering where you got that statement from and I take it back. 30 home runs because last season <laughs> last season he had 27 in 137 games and the year before that he had 15 in 88 games, which is about half of the season. It's a little bit more than half of the season, but it's close. If you were to extrapolate that, like that word, um that that comes out to close to 30 home runs and he's improving every season on his power production so he could do it maybe he won't you know what i mean but he, yeah. he's a, he's a 25 plus home run hitter at this point right now and um <laughs> and he's a good on base guy and he's a good fielder so i'll take it all right man i don't i don't look with that i don't like your trolling attitude right now man i'm not trolling man i'm just i listen i listen to a lot of new york sports stuff and you're not the only one is all i'm saying that what that likes to steal that likes to put a little bit more uh what's it called okay so a little bit more like fine you know you like to dress up uh what's what's that saying dress you can't dress a put a lipstick on a pig with a, put lipstick on a pig yeah that's yeah but but much. i don't understand where this is coming from because he the the, the biggest problem with aaron hicks is his He's injury prone. If you look at his entire career, he's played two. He has two seasons where he's played more than 100 games. And in those two seasons, he he experienced injuries as well. When he came to the Yankees, he struggled mightily. People were saying, what the hell were the Yankees, you know, thinking about signing Aaron Hicks? And he got a little bit better. And, and year after year, he's a little bit better and a little bit better. And finally, last season, he had his healthiest season, and he put together a 366, 467 slugging type season. Now, you know, in the free agent market, who is it that, that said this? Joel Sherman uh, put out some comps. A guy like Aaron Hicks on the free agent market is getting like 12, 13, 14 million dollars. So the Yankees got him at a bargain rate. Now, does, does that mean that he's going to repeat what he did last season? He could very well suck next year. And I'll sit here on the mic and tell you that was a horrible deal by the New York Yankees. But as we sit today, I think it was a good move. I just think it was too many years. I would have given him maybe, you know, four or five years max. But seven, he's going to be 36 years old at the end of this. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I never said it wasn't a good deal, even though I think he's a, just a little bit overrated. Just me, though. But uh, let me ask you something. Did he miss time last year due to injury, or was it more just like splitting time with 
I forgot. Did he miss time because of injury? He had a he had a hamstring year? issue where he missed a couple of days here couple and there. Couple days, right? Yeah. Like it was like yeah, a I'm hamstring issue the, here, hamstring issue there. I'm just looking at the Yankees team besides Aaron Judge. You know, aren't the players on the Yankees roster all going to play like maybe 145 games, 140 games? There's like just there's just too many guys. That's fine by fit. me, man. Is it? Yeah, I'm good with depth. I I feel like I'm a believer that you got you need to have like everyday players, and besides Aaron Judge and Glaber Torres, I don't see another everyday player. Aaron Hicks on the Yankees. Well, you, don't you have to fit time for Brett Garner and Stanton? So Stanton is your everyday DH, and then your left your left field is your fluid is the is the position that you rotate. That's where you rotate Frazier, Gardner, Stanton. And then you have a floating DH as well. But most of the time, Giancarlo Stanton is going to be your everyday DH. That's what I would do. Yeah, but I, yeah, but I think you're looking Brett at Gardner, more than just Stanton. As the- Brett Gardner isn't an everyday left fielder anymore. You know what I mean? I love Brett Gardner. I love that he's on the team. But he's not an everyday left fielder anymore. And uh, that's just the long and short of it, CT. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I was just thinking in terms of the DH position, uh, Gary Sanchez is almost – borderline just a dh i mean i think i think his defense i don't i don't love his defense but i think that he's going to there's no way that he's going to repeat what he did last year defensively i think that he'll be he there's no way that he'll survive in new york if he puts up another season like he did last year defensively which i think bled into his uh his offense then he's going to be run out of town there's no way in hell I was going to continue to say that Luke Voigt is like another DH splitting time with probably You know what? Greg you know Bird. what, CT? I think you're trolling right now. I'm not trolling. I swear to God. It's just it's hard to get these points across when we're going back and forth. But I was just saying that I think you're you're besides Aaron Judge and Glaber Torres, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if every other player on the Yankees cracks like 140 starts, maybe. I'm good 45. with that, man. I'm telling you. I'm happy All with right. it. I'm good with it. I just, I, as like I said, I, I, I think you need like a core group of players that are everyday players, unless injury causes them to to miss time. But I think you, hey. I think you have a core group. I think you have, I think you have Aaron Judge is an everyday player. Aaron Hicks is an everyday player. John Carlos Stanton is an everyday player. Glaber's an everyday player. Uh, Gary Sanchez is going to be an everyday player. That's five out of your nine guys in your lineup. And then you have a fluid shortstop position, a fluid third, not fluid third base. Actually, Miguel Andujar is an everyday third player, uh, player too. You have a fluid shortstop position where you're rotating DJ LeMahieu and Troy Tulowitzki, and hopefully one of those guys could win the job over full time. And then you have a fluid left field position. And, and I think the hope for the Yankees is that Clint Frazier turns out to be the, the real deal and Clint Frazier becomes the everyday left fielder while Brett Gardner's kind of playing pinch runner, give this guy a rest over here, a defensive replacement over there. That's what I think is going to happen with the Yankees personally. And uh, in terms of the pitching, I think that the the, the Yankees are, are set up pretty good with pitching. Um, I would have liked to have gotten one more reliever uh, or at least one more starter. But I think we're in good shape, man. I don't, I don't have anything to worry about with the Yankees right now. I'm happy with the team as it stands. Yeah, no, they they looked like they're pretty stacked on paper, so yeah, man, should be a good, should be a good time. Word. All right, I think that that's good enough for today, CT. Um, so here's what else you need to know in the world of baseball: Marwin Gonzalez signs. Do you like the Yankees' new coach, Aaron Boone, from last year? Yes, I think Aaron Boone is a good coach. Um, what? Yeah, I think Aaron Boone is whatever boo all right here's what else you need to know marwin gonzalez okay. signs with the <laughs> twins two years 21 million dollars the yankees hired andy pettit to their front office as a special assistant to brian cashman today clayton kershaw is battling dead arm uh-oh but he's expected to make his opening day start anything else i missed in the world of baseball ct uh jd martinez did mention that this whole offseason is, is embarrassing for baseball. I agree, but we could talk about that on the next episode. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Here's our sign-offs. <laughs> Had to throw a little. Yeah. <laughs> Wel- 
Welcome to the show is brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show to get a free audiobook download and a 30 day free trial. That's audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show. For more exclusive deals like 10% off of KD Custom Kicks, for Major League Baseball players like Aaron Judge get their custom cleats and sneakers, visit WTTSPod.com forward slash save. That's WTTSPod.com forward slash save. Last but not least, our music is by VM Varga. If you listen to the podcast on your phones, you're going to listen to some music. That's by VM Varga and by Rapternal Music by Naughty Productions. And all the artwork for our show is done by Luigi Gomez. You can follow him on Instagram. I'm not going to give you his handle because he changes it all the time. CT. <laughs> Peace out. Peace, everybody.